Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're doing GMA Friday for today's first video. So, as always on a Friday, we're having your month head look at which is going to take us into the middle of February. So, um, with the sort of month head time frame starting to move in towards the latter part of the winter, we haven't had any winter yet, <laughs> particularly, but there we go. We are beginning to move on towards the um, to the last stages of winter, uh, at least meteorological winter, anyway, which is 1st of December to the last day of February. We're moving into that sort of time frame now uh, with the month head look ahead. So we'll see whether there's any sign of winter uh, emerging with the JMA and CFSV two miles, and I'll get on that for you uh, very shortly. Just to say that today's second video update later on this afternoon, we'll have a look at the weather for the next week, 10 days, with all of the regular features. So I'm going to start off with the JMA 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into weekly periods uh, from the North Pole and Arctic view down. So this is the North Pole of the Arctic uh, just here, and then we've got the middle latitudes uh, around there. Blue is, is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange and red extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. These are the mean flow charts uh, broken down into weekly periods. And the first week period will take us from today, the 17th through to uh, the 24th of January. So the coming week will be dominated by high pressure. We have this large area of above average heights, which is high pressure sitting not only over UK and Ireland, but most of Northern and Western Europe as well. Uh, below average heights up to our north, that's where the low pressure is. Jet streams push northwards as well, so on the mild side of the jet. But under this area of high pressure, it probably won't be overly mild. I think we can Certainly expect overnight frost, maybe some freezing fog as well. What it will definitely be, though, is a lot drier than we've had through most of this week. We did get a drier interlude over Christmas and New Year, but generally it's been a very unsettled winter. And, of course, the autumn before that was very unsettled and wet too. So this is a prolonged spell of drier weather setting up for the next week. Uh, week two, which takes us from the 24th to the 31st of January, last day of the month, uh, looks like this. So below average heights are up to our north, northeast, above average heights to our west and southwest. <coughs> Excuse me. And that sort of sends a jet stream on a northwest, southeast alignment. There's still probably quite a lot of uh, dry weather associated with this. High pressure is close to us and the Atlantic is blocked off. It could be a little bit cooler, though, as the wind is coming out of the very far North Atlantic and Greenland into the UK like that. It looks cold for Scandinavia, by the way. Big change for them as this trough is digging southwards. That will bring winter to northern parts of Europe. Also, eastern America, where it has been a very mild winter, looking a lot colder with this trough of low pressure allowing cold air to dig southwards from Canada. So this is quite a significant change that the JMA is forecasting for both sides of the Atlantic in the last week of January. Although for us, actually most of that cold air is kept at bay over northeastern parts of Europe. We're just sort of on the periphery of it with this ridge of high pressure. If the high was to pull any further north and west, obviously we could then open the door into proper Arctic winds. But most of the cold northerly air is actually plunging away to our east and southeast. And then we go through to weeks three and four, which takes us from the 31st of January to the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. And we're looking mainly dry, actually, here for, through the first half of February. High pressure is centred pretty much over the top of the country. So this really is a case of February looking high and dry with a lot of fine weather included. Probably quite cold, probably overnight frost. But by day, I don't think it would be too bad. We're not bringing in, or we're seemingly not bringing in any, in any sort of Siberian or Arctic air. So potentially you're getting to February, of course, the sun's getting quite a bit stronger, so potentially by day, thing quite unpleasant and spring-like, but by night it could be a little bit on the cold side. Uh, Eastern Europe looks cold with this trough of low pressure digging down the east side of Europe, and also again, um, Northern and Eastern America look cold. So again, it looks like both uh, Eastern America and some parts of Europe go a lot colder, but for us, most of that is kept away from us as we're under that ridge 
of high pressure, albeit it would be cold with uh, cold at night with night frost. Right, so let's confirm all of that with the tropical and mid latitude view. So on this chart, the uh, British Isles and Island in the top right hand corner of the chart, as you're looking at it, that of course is the equator. Just there, nice straight line that I managed to draw there. Um, this is the northern hemisphere on the north side of the equator, southern hemisphere on the southern side of the equator. That's America and Canada just there. Uh, Europe is over here. Russia is just there. Remember, of course, of course Asia, China, uh, Japan um, down there. Right, so that everybody knows where they are. And by the way, Australia is just there. Looking more unsettled for Australia or some parts of Australia in the week ahead. This is for week one. So it does look so they'll get some much needed rain with below average heights in the south of Australia in the coming week. Anyway, back to our weather. So um, this is how we're looking with above average heights in week one taking us from the 17th to the 24th of January. High pressure is in control. It means it's uh, significantly drier than average week. Definitely so. Um, no problems there uh, with rainfall. Much, much drier than we've had for most of this winter. Also mild. So milder than average, temperature normally is around 1 to 2 degrees uh, above average. Spain looks quite cold. Many northern parts of Europe significantly mild now. So it's a dry and mild week ahead, probably colder than the model is expecting, though, due to overnight frost and the potential maybe even for a little bit of uh, freezing fog. When we have such dry conditions as we have there, uh, I think we will start to generate uh, fog under this area of high pressure. So, could be a little bit colder than mild expects, but overall, relatively um, mild by day when the sun is out, cold, frosty nights possible. Week 2 is the 24th to the 31st of January, with above average heights to our southwest. By the way, we can't see the Arctic and uh, sort of North Pole view here. We've just looked at that view down, though, of course. That's off the chart. We can't see Scandinavia either. So we're under this area of high pressure that's sitting to our west southwest. That's the Atlantic blocked off. A trough of below average heights extending from Scandinavia into northern parts of Europe, which you can't see all that well, but we know uh, it's there. Jet stream is probably on a northwest southeast alignment, as is the wind direction. Precipitation anomalies for week two from the uh, uh, 24th to 31st January last week of month. A little bit above average in the north, driving average in the south. Still going for above average temperatures, perhaps a bit surprising. I thought that would be a bit colder than that. Um, but still rather above average with the temperature anomaly for week two. Notice looking very cold across many eastern parts of America. Winter really biting over on the other side of the Atlantic. And then weeks three and four, which takes us through the first two weeks of February. It's the 31st of January to the 14th of February. has high pressure again centred over the top of the country. High pressure domination then through the first half of February. Precipitation anomalies are dry on average, as you'd expect, with high pressure in control. It's high and dry. And uh, the temperature anomaly is still a little bit above average, but it's coming down a little bit. So it's slightly above average with temperature normally first half February, but not as mild as it has been. Still looking cold or even very cold for many northern and eastern parts of America. So that's how the, uh, the GMA is looking. Let's look at the CFS in comparison. So again, these are 500 millibar heights, and they're broken down into weekly periods. The first week period takes us from the 17th to 21st of January. Coming week, in agreement with the JMA, CFS has us dominated by high pressure sitting right over the top of the country. So high pressure is in control to start us off. Then we go through to week two, which is the 24th to the 30th of January. A little bit different to what the JMA is showing. It has more of a ridge across central and southern parts of Europe. Uh, high pressure also out in the Atlantic, low pressure to our north. It's a proper messy situation. We're trying to bring down colder air from the northwest. So this high pressure over central Europe is probably maintaining or bringing back very mild south to southwesterlies there. In the last week of January. No last week of January cold snap with the CFS. Week 3 is the 31st of January to the 6th of February. High pressure again dominates sitting over and just to the east of us. Low pressure is out to the northwest. This continues mostly dry and potentially mild conditions with the air coming up from the southwest. 
And then week four is the 7th to the 13th of February. High pressure through Central Europe, low pressure up to the north. No changes really other than high pressures in control, but it stays mild or very mild with winds coming in from the southwest. So the CFS is really going to sound on mild weather today. Having said that, week one is colder. So the 17th, 21st of Jan to 23rd of January, under that big area of high pressure, we have colder than average temperature anomaly as we do on the other side of America as well. So that is factoring in the cold nights that are coming under this area of high pressure, at least initially over weekend into the early part of next week, and probably freezing fog, keeping the daytime temperature quite low in some places as well. But by the time we get through to week two, we're back to you, back to normal, back to square one with temperature on. It's 24th to 30th of January. Temperature anomalies then are going above average. Notice how severely cold it is for much of eastern and southeastern America. But most of Eurasia is extraordinarily mild, off the scale mild uh, in week two. Week three, again, very mild. This is the 31st of January, 6th of February, significantly above average temperatures, not just for the UK, but through most of Northern Europe and Russia as well. And week four rounds it all off. That one is the 7th to 13th of January and also very significantly above average temperature anomaly. So once this first week is out of the way, we really start to push up those temperatures yet again, as has been the case throughout the winter. Precipitation, finally, so week one, precipitation normally from CFS, 17th to 23rd of January, is uh, much drier than average in the week ahead. It looks a little bit more unsettled for week two, as the anomaly is going from being significantly drier than average to near normal. This is 24 to 30th of January, average sort of precipitation, or maybe no signal, but I think that could be a little bit more unsettled. Week three is also close to average, probably losing the signal now. Further out we're going. And then finally, week four from the 7th to the 13th of February, that one is also very close to average. Signals are weakening. So we've got um, agreement for week one, definitely. They are both agreeing that high pressure will dominate the weather, and that's going to keep us mostly dry. Bit, bit of a um, difference in temperature. The CFS looks quite cold for week one, uh, becoming week, whereas the JMA suggests a little bit above average. I would go more of a CFS on that. I think we'll have some pretty cold nights, which will lower the overall temperature. And if fog, freezing fog, starts getting going over weekend into the early part of next week, then that will limit the temperature further. However, once that's out of the way, uh, both bars want to warm things up for the final week of uh, of um, January. CFS looks very mild for the last week of January. JMA a little bit less so. Then into early February, it's quite a bit of uncertainty about that period. But I think the overall trend that is clearly there is to be quite dry and still relatively anti-cyclonic and yes we can expect periods of more unsettled conditions at times of course but overall it looks like high pressure could well be taking over for february uh certainly the first half of it bringing a reasonable amount of dry weather and still potentially looking mild or very mild although the exact placement of the ridge will be critical on that if it's like the jma shows for the first two weeks of february which is a high pressure centered over the top of the country then that will be a rather colder scenario from frost what the cfs is doing though does look very very mild through the first half of February and significantly drier as well. So it could be we're turning the corner on the very prolonged wet spell that we've had really since the middle of September. We've been in a very, very prolonged wet spell. We may be turning the corner on that uh, now and we could be going into a much drier phase of weather. We shall see about that. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what these wells are showing. So it could all look completely different next week. This is just how they look today. But next week could be... A different story. Right, we'll be back later on this afternoon with your week's 10-day video update, so come back for that then. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.